I'm going to talk about first the mountain of engagement, which is uh, how you've identified pathways and patterns of engagement in your work and your project. And this is very, very important, especially when we're working in the open ecosystem. The sustainability comes a lot from your community and their original projects for the community, nurtured by the community. When we think about, let's say, the corporate world or our scientific labs or um, these environments that are a bit more regulated, we are able to see well-defined managerial levels where we know that we have folks that are, um, let's say, a project managers that probably don't manage people, but projects themselves will have the managers or your supervisors or, or the lab PIs. So these levels are, are very well defined and they normally tend to have a hier hierarchical structure that also defines uh, the interactions uh, in the downstream of that mountain. When we move into open spaces or into open projects, we also have a, diff a slightly different mountain where the, the different scaffolding or the different levels in the hierarchy are also filled by our community members. And this can be you, for example, that started a project, but also all of the other folks that you're going to be interacting with and onboarding as your project evolves um, or becomes a bit more mature. And when we think about collaboration, especially, um, you are now well advanced into this open life science program. Probably you'll have discussed what what collaboration is and what how you can um, how you can include other folks so they can start collaborating and engaging with your projects. Um, but just as a reminder, sometimes we do, we only manage to see a certain level as um, forward facing or public facing of this collaboration. But for you to have healthy and safe and long term collaboration and engagement with your community member, there are a lot, a lot of uh, processes and activities that are involved. Um, like Alex mentioned before, one of the core um, bases for a healthy collaboration or community is having accessibility as a first and foremost thought and inclusion, how you're going to bring all of these adverse voices and ensure that they are all heard uh, and they are all empowered in your project. And this is very, very important because as you start bringing folks from all over the world from with adverse backgrounds from different walks of life, you have to ensure that all of your members and all of your community folks have the equal opportunity to exchange their values and the most important part is that they also are empowered themselves and can empower each other to take uh, to take action, to make suggestions, to enhance your community, your community experience, and in general have a safe culture. And we normally achieve this through discovering pathways, which is how someone finds your project, engage with your project, and then probably onboards into it. So first we want to understand how people are hearing on, or learning about our project, how people are coming to our community, our organization, our lab, and also what culture we are facing, um, what, what culture we are showcasing or they're facing from their outward perspective. Um, also, we need to understand how our contributors or our community members transition from a certain level in a community interaction to another level. Um, so very common uh, when we talk about uh, engagement and onboarding in open source projects, we normally talk about the first stage being awareness, then we have engagement, then we have onboarding, consolidation, and probably offboarding. How are the mechanisms or the processes in which someone can go from one step to the other and develop paths in which the people can actually uh, be engaged throughout these different steps of engagement? and even up to leadership, of course. So there are many, many ways in which we can uh, promote leadership within our, uh, within our projects, or that we can actually encourage those folks that want to move 
uh, upwards to leadership positions or more engaged positions within our project. Um, there are going to be some folks, for example, that become uh, that will become your own advocates or the advocates of your projects. There are some other folks that will probably start with small uh, tasks like fixing a bug or uh, fixing a typo, for example. And by means of the culture and the interactions with the folks that are already well engaged with the project, they'll, they'll remain or they'll stay within your community and your project. And it is this interactions um, inside and within our project that leads to this uh, process of moving upwards the mountain of engagement. So for you to identify how this interaction, uh, how these different steps and these different levels in your mountain of interaction uh, operate within themselves, there are five steps that you can take. Um, the first is identifying or being aware of um, what are the different kind of interactions that people or your community has with your work. And then separate your level of engagements in within that hierarchical structure. You're going to have, uh, it is like a pyramid structure because um, the narrower, well, the higher you go into your mountain, also your, um, your interactions or your engagement activities should be much more narrowed or, or scoped. Once you have uh, identify how folks are interacting with your project or with your uh, yeah, with, with your project, you can start grouping your interactions within the bands uh, that you've identified in the levels of engagement and identify what activities or what processes actually help or which activities don't work to keep folks engaged and allow them to move upwards in leadership positions. And finally, have to prioritize you also your work to create more opportunities. Um, and this is especially because the crucial, I've mentioned it before, and I mention it every time when I talk about leadership and um, inclusiveness in open source communities. Um, the, your, your core goal as a day maintainer or a, leader, or a leader of an open source or an open project is to create more opportunities and empower those folks within your community and your project. Because although we also want uh, probably you want to be forever in your project. There might be a, way, a, a time in which you or other folks in leadership position will have to step down. And you need to ensure sustainability of your project. And this can only be achieved by empowering your community and your community members. So let's break this down into a, a more concrete example. So when we think about our project, there are many different ways in which people start interacting. Sometimes we use social media to uh, talk about our project, what we're doing. We write, uh, we write blogs, for example. We host uh, local events. I think something that the Turing uh, way does really, really well is having all different kinds of events, um, whether it's collaboration cafes or book dashes. Um, that, so that folks can come from different angles and so that this adapts more to whatever time and level of participation folks are interested in. And then this band of engagement relates directly to this path that I was mentioning before um, on how the first, how someone establishes first the first contact with your project and then how they get engaged with it and then how they are they end up towards participating, collaborating, and eventually leading. And then the third step is putting these two together. How identify first how someone is coming. So probably they found about your project or about your event through um, through a tweet or through uh, a newsletter or word of mouth. And then for someone probably that was engaged at that very uh, at that very low level, maybe they want they like the community, they like the culture, they like the project, so they start getting more engaged and they eventually become a resource maintainer. 
Um, and then they want probably to become your advocates and organize events for you or lead participation or mentor others. But for these, sometimes we have uh, spells in which we get a lot of folks engaging and sticking around for a while. And then sometimes we have a lot of folks that jump into our project and eventually just leave or, or disappear. And it's very important that we understand why this is happening. Uh, what are the main barriers that these folks are facing? Um, and what are the things that are actually allowing them to move towards leadership and how we are actively in, um, empowering them within our community. And very good ways, uh, very good ways to identify uh, what is working and what is not working is, as I said, first identifying what are the things that are making this participation or engagement difficult, what are the blockers, or how we can better support our folks in our communities to overcome these blockers. Um, also, how we can make this whole transition or this whole um, this whole engagement more accessible and easier for folks. And I think also something that I also like mentioning every time, and I talk a lot about offboarding and replacement of leadership, is allowing folks uh, or making it known that folks can step down or pause their interactions at any point, because we all have lives we all have, especially in this 2020 that has been so chaotic and nothing has been like normal. Um, we also have to normalize um, people taking time off to recharge and not burn out. So that is also something that has to be very, very visible in our communities, allowing folks to step in and step down um, as they need it. So I want you to reflect and probably we can go over this later in our, um, I think we have a couple of minutes probably um, to think, to share about our thoughts. Um, and it is especially, what do you convey in your specific communities or your specific project about how you value, uh, delegate and evaluate people in your culture? And also, if you're, you have already started to see patterns in which folks start engaging with your project from an early, early stage, and how they're moving towards or upwards or downwards in your mountain of engagement, what are um, the things that are working for you and what are uh, your own leadership goals when it comes to getting people into your project and off of your project? Now, for, for you to be able to do this, uh, for you to be able to reflect and have a solid plan of engagement and leadership, um, you have to keep data. You have to track what you're doing. You have to make sure that you know who's, in, who's being um, involved in your project, who's engaging, who's leaving. Um, and all of this is a lot of data. So. Think about GDPR whenever you are tracking anything within your project, especially when it comes to people. Um, make sure that you're not disclosing any personal data. Uh, make sure that also folks are aware of what kind of data you're taking, uh, you're, you're collecting. May, uh, also make all of this um, data collection voluntary. So if anyone does doesn't want to disclose certain kind of data or information, allow them to do that, uh, but also be very, very clear about what sort of data you're collecting, who's going to access it, how long it's going to be uh, stored for, and how you're going to get rid of this data. Uh, I know this is like the, the boring um, disclose or little print letters, uh, but it's very, very important. And now, as, you're, uh, as you start identifying these processes and these pathways and you start engaging with folks, you're going to start building a much broader picture 
um, and much, uh, many more stories about how people discover your project and how you are building your own culture. By doing this, you are also able to discover successes and challenges and highlight that to develop your community practices. And this necessarily brings us to community interactions, which is you are uh, you already have um, all of this engagement, you have all of these processes for folks uh, to move into your different leadership positions or mountain of engagement. So we have to start thinking again how our like the different areas in our communities interact with each other. And within the open leadership framework with Mozilla, uh, when we the, uh, there is this framework where we actually design for understanding, sharing, and participation and inclusion. And this is basically what, ti uh, what ties together the different uh, kind of community interactions that we can bring into our project. And I'm going to just give, go through some examples for, for this. Um, so the first example and something that we think a lot when we talk about open source is the idea of gifting. That I'm giving you a present with no strings attached, um, so you see the value of it, so that you can start using it and building it, uh, building on it, or reuse it for your own purpose. And there are many, many reasons or many advantages of having these open models or having this gift approach. First is you're incentivizing adoption. Uh, you're also reducing the barriers of adoption for folks. Um, you can Because also you have um, an open culture and an open development, you can strive to have improved products and services. Then the next uh, community interaction is creating together. And this again ties very, very closely with the open source culture, which is sharing the tasks and costs of achieving a pre-established goal. Um, sometimes um, in open source, budgets are very, very tight. A lot of this is run in voluntary time. So there are three, uh, three pillars of again, contributions that we can bring. One is money, the other one is time, and the other one is expertise. And whatever it is that you can provide to an open source or a project or open community, this always leads again to better product because you, that means that you're bringing folks that have different experiences, different expertise. And if you are able to spur some of your time uh, as well, you're lowering um, some operational costs because that means that you're not having to hire someone. Again, this is one side of the coin when we have another side of the coin of open source that is again um, the disadvantage of it being all built uh, and relying on, on voluntary time. Um, another way of interacting with your community is learning through use, um, and it relies, it, sorry, it is based on collecting and analyzing activity to improve products and services. And I think Spotify is a very good product. That do, it's a product that does this very, very, very good. Um, and I've, I don't know if you've seen in social media now, everyone or a lot of folks are sharing their year in review. Um, this is something that is not done through machine learning or AI, but it's actually collecting data, identifying how the community and how folks are interacting with this platform or this product to drive new insights, new community engagement. Um, and folks are, are loving sharing all like these stories, like this idea of what they're listening to, they're finding uh, other common grounds with other folks that listen, for example, to the same music, to the same podcast. And the main advantages of this is that one, you as whoever is developing this product, you understand your users, um, you understand how they're using your product, what uh, works, what doesn't work. You can also improve products um, or work on strategies to better engage um, 
to better engage with your community and your users. And also we see a lot of fail fast uh, or you didn't find something that is not working very easily and then um, remove that feature, for example. Um, and something that I think uh, all of the network, the Bastilla network does very well is networking around common interests. So it is coordinating to ensure that individual activities achieve more towards a short mission. Uh, for example, when we think, we think about uh, Mozilla, we think about an organization whose main purpose is preserving the internet, making it more accessible, more safe, um, and more inclusive. And we have all of these programs. Now we have, for example, Open Life Science that um, spun out from the Open Leadership Program from Mozilla, but it all drives towards the same mission of making tech much more, or tech or open communities more inclusive and more accessible and safer. Um, so although some of these initiatives uh, might seem that they don't fall under the direct same umbrella, uh, they do share uh, a mission and they all work, to work together. So uh, they will work together toward a common interest. So the question for this section is um, to think about that one open advantage of your project and how you are actually um, what community interactions would help you to achieve your goals? Depending on what kind of project you're working on, um, probably you're going to lean more towards the networking side, like working with partnering projects or probably understanding how your users or your community are benefiting from your project. So we have to also be very, very aware of which are the most meaningful community interactions that we can have. And just to close up, there, uh, there is some further, further reading. I think these are already in the Google Doc, uh, but also the slides are there. So I really, really encourage you to read a bit, uh, read a bit more about mountain of engagements and start doing a, an exercise within your project and how you see this user or, or this contributor and collaborator path uh, applying to your own project.